chapter 7. And this is the law of the guilt offering. It is most holy. In the place where they kill the burnt offering shall they kill the guilt offering, and the blood thereof shall be dashed against the altar round about. And he shall offer of it all the fat thereof, the fat tail and the fat that covers the inwards, and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, which is by the loins, and the lobe above the liver, which he shall take away by the kidneys. And the priest shall make them smoke upon the altar for an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a guilt offering. Every male among the priests may eat thereof. It shall be eaten in a holy place. It is most holy. As is the sin offering, so is the guilt offering. There is one law for them. The priest that makes atonement therewith, he shall have it. And the priest that offers any man's burnt offering, even the priest shall have to himself the skin of the burnt offering which he hath offered. And every meal offering that is baked in the oven, and all that is dressed in the stewing pan and on the griddle, shall be the priest that offers it. And every meal offering, mingled with oil or dry, shall all the sons of Aaron have one as well as another. And this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which one may offer unto the Lord. If he offer it for thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving unleavened cakes mingled with oil, and unleavened wafers spread with oil, and cakes mingled with oil of fine flour soaked. With cakes of leavened bread he shall present his offering with, with the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving. And of it he shall present one out of each offering for a gift unto the Lord. It shall be the priest that dashes the blood of the peace offering against the altar. And the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving shall be eaten on the day of his offering. He shall not leave any of it until the morning. But if the sacrifice of his offering be a vow or a free will offering, it shall be eaten on the day that he offers his sacrifice, and on the morrow that which remains of it may be eaten. But that which remaineth of the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burnt with fire. And if any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings be at all eaten on the third day, it shall not be accepted. Neither shall it be imputed unto him that offers it. It shall be an abhorred thing, and the soul that eats of it shall bear his iniquity. And the flesh that touches any unclean thing shall not be eaten. It shall be burnt with fire. And as for the flesh, every one that is clean may eat thereof. But the soul that eats of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings that pertain unto the Lord, having his uncleanliness upon him, that soul shall be cut off from his people. And when any one shall touch any unclean thing, whether it be the uncleanliness of man, or an unclean beast, or any unclean, detestable thing, and eat of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which pertain unto the Lord, that soul shall be cut off from his people. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, You shall eat no fat of ox, or sheep, or goat, and the fat of that which dies of itself, and the, and the fat of that which is torn of beast, may be used for any other service, but you shall in no wise eat of it. For whosoever eats the fat of the beast, of which men present an offering made by fire unto the Lord, even the soul that eats it shall be cut off from his people. And you shall eat no manner of blood, whether it be of fowl or of beast, in any of your dwellings. Whosoever be that eats any blood, that soul shall be cut off from his people. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, he that offers his sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord shall bring his offering unto the Lord out of his sacrifice of peace offerings. His own hands shall bring the offerings of the Lord made by fire. The fat with the breast shall he bring, that the breast may be waved for a wave offering before the Lord. And the priest shall make the fat smoke upon the altar, but the breast shall be Aaron's and his son's. And the right thigh shall be given unto the priest for a heave offering out of your sacrifices of peace offerings. He among the sons of Aaron that offer the blood of peace offerings and the fat shall have the right thigh for a portion. For the breast of waving and the, th and the thigh of heaving have I taken of the children of Israel out of their sacrifices of peace offerings and have given them unto Aaron the priest, and unto his sons, as they do forever from the children of Israel. 
This is the consecrated portion of our own and the consecrated portion of his sons out of the offerings of the Lord made by fire in the day when they were presented to minister unto the Lord in the priest's office, which the Lord commanded to be given them of the children of Israel in the day that they were anointed. It is a due forever throughout their generations. This is the law of the burnt offering, of the meal offering, and the sin offering, and of the guilt offering, and of the consecration offering, and of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which the Lord commanded Moses in Mount Sinai, in the day that he commanded the children of Israel to present the offerings unto the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. All right, let's go back up to verse 1. And once again, we are just continuing. We are continuing from the last chapter. Uh, As Moses began to command Aaron his sons in the way to conduct uh, these presentations, you might say, to the Lord uh, in the law or the ordinances concerning or the instructions concerning the burnt offerings, uh, the peace offerings, uh, as we'll see, all the offerings, the meal offerings as well. Uh, and how they would be presented. It's the ordinances, you might say, and the statutes of the of these um, uh, rituals, so to speak. But we'll find out. We're just continuing uh, once again uh, uh, from the beginnings. Even we're just still in that, that constant continuance uh, of Genesis. But here, as we uh, as we go a full circle. Is what it really is. As as we go a full circle, uh, or to complete uh, one great understanding of the Lord, we're going to pick it up here in verse one. Uh, and this is the law of the guilt offering. It is most holy. So that is, it is the play. Uh, the law concerning now this guilt offering. A guilt offering is the asham. The it was for guilt. Uh, guilt is something that happens when we commit an error and we come to the realization that we've done something wrong. Uh, we'll find out we have a guilt or we feel like we should be responsible for that action in some way. And that was the purpose of the Asham. So this is going to be the ordinances concerning the Asham because we'll find out it's most holy. Most holy, it's set aside, it's sanctified for a, a, a very uh, a certain purpose. It, it shows that one is coming to understanding, and uh, means just that. One is growing uh, before the Lord. Two. Two. In the place where they kill the burnt offering, shall they kill the guilt offering, and the blood thereof shall be dashed against the altar round about. In the place they kill the burnt offering. So it's going to be done in the same place. That's on the north side of the altar, place of judgment. Because it's going to take the place of the judgment. Uh, that's the same place they're going to slay the guilt offering or this which is going to be offered in a substitution or to make atonement for uh, your guilt. Uh, now the burnt offering is the old law. That would be for an immoral iniquity. And the blood thereof shall be dashed against the altar. So the blood is the representation and, and it takes the place of the animal's life because that's what it represented was the life of the animal or which represented your life. Uh, you might say it's the mercy going downhill and finally it winds up in the blood. And the blood is going to be that life that takes the, uh, the place for the sin or the error that was committed. That's why it's dashed against the altar, and the altar is just simply that place where um, uh, it's it's kind of done away with or brought to to be destroyed. Three, and he shall offer of it all the fat thereof, the fat tail, and the fat that covers the inwards. So the priest, he's going to offer uh, for this guilt offering um, the fat tail. We'll find out. These are the similar ordinances as we found. Uh, with the peace offerings, or the shalem, it was to keep the peace or keep good health, because basically that's what you're doing. This fat tail resent is the um, the 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 rump or that fat that's on the rump. It shows that it's it's a sign of the strength. Uh, even in the tail, it's 
the, even the fat that covers the inwards. Well, it's all about the goodness or the fatness, all the, the benefits, you might say, that comes from these portions for and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, which is by the loins and the lobe above the liver, which he shall take away by the kidneys. And these two kidneys, and we witness these kidneys. These kidneys are like the reins. Uh, they even have a, the, uh, um, that figurative um, ability to be used as the reins. Of course, the reins is that which controls, that kind of brings us to the mind, or that one, that part that's within, it's, and the fat that's on them. Uh, that's all the goodness that comes from the ability to be able to control these things. It's just that which is by the loins. Of course, that's the choice part. That's uh, these, um, even the best part, you might say, the lobe above the liver as well, which is by the kidneys. And, of course, the kidneys is where they control. The lobe of the liver is that extension or the excess that comes from it. There's always some excess, God. When God gives you understanding, Hashem prospers you with your knowledge. We'll find out uh, there is always a residue of thanks, and there is a residue of understanding. Five, and the priest shall make them smoke upon the altar for an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is, it is a guilt offering, and the priest shall make them smoke. And the priest going to turn it into a pleasant odor before the Lord. We'll find out. This is where your sin is is brought to understanding. Of course, the Lord, he already has knowledge and understanding. That's why you have the altar. And these things are offered by fire because it's a judgment of the Lord. That's the way he's made it from the beginning uh, for these guilt offerings. And it's because you finally come to your senses and the Lord is um, going to Accept that which you bring or that which you offer to him. Six, every male among the priests may eat thereof. It shall be eaten in a holy place. It is most holy. So all the priests are going to be allowed to eat, not the fat, not the fat, but the meat that is left over. Or a portion of it anyway. Uh, because it's most holy, and all the priests, any among them may eat thereof. We'll, we'll see. Uh, these are going to be the ordinances and, and part of the statutes concerning these things. Seven, as is the sin offering, so is the guilt offering. There is one law for them, the priest that makes atonement therewith, he shall have it. And so with the sin offering is with the guilt offering. That means they can eat the meat in that similar way. They are the equal in that way. Whatever priest uh, will find that dashes the blood against the altar or actually makes the atonement for, we'll find out it's going to be his portion, the same way with the sin offering as with the guilt offering. And we'll find the sin offering was just that which makes atonement for your shortcomings. Uh, when you when you realize you are guilty of these shortcomings, we... Want to make atonement unto Hashem. Uh, we don't want to keep repeating these actions. 8. And the priest that offers any man's burnt offering, even the priest shall have to himself the skin of the burnt offering which he hath offered. And this, we'll, we'll see the priest, the one that stood before the Lord and done these things, this one that offered any man's burnt offering, that was the Olah. That was that which made atonement for his moral iniquity or his moral perversions. Uh, his uh, lack of understanding of the law, because that was what the what Hashem gave that to you for was to prevent these things in the first place. But the priest shall take to himself the skin. Of course, that's the outer covering. That's the flesh of the of the uh, animal of the burnt offering. Of course, that was the ola, that which was offered up, which he has offered, and whatever. Um, We'll find out. This is going to be like an, a do, an ordinance, uh, a task. Uh, not only does uh, he get it, but he has to take it. Nine. And every meal offering that is baked in the oven and all that is dressed in the stewing pan and, all, and on the griddle shall be the priest that offers it. So every meal offering. Uh, these, these meal offerings was the... Uh, minka, that was all the donations that were presented to the Lord that was baked in the oven, all these things. 
And these mill offers are going to call uh, uh, anything that was used with the flour, all that was dressed in the stewing pan, the griddle, however, whichever way it was cooked, as we covered in a uh, under these uh, laws of the mill offering. Ten, every meal offering mingled with oil or dry shall all the sons of Aaron have one as well as another. So every meal offering that was mingled with oil, as we'll find out, some were, and there was those that was dry, but all had salt, and some did have frankincense, the frankincense, and a memorial portion was presented for the Lord, and the rest would be Aaron's. Uh, all of his sons, and it didn't matter who you were. Uh, there was no chain of command in that. Uh, all were equal in that aspect. 11, and this is the law of sacrifice of peace offerings, which one may offer unto the Lord. And this is the law, or the, uh, the instructions on the sacrifice of these peace offerings. We're changing paragraphs. Uh... Uh, whoever offers it unto Hashem, whoever does the deed and makes that, brings that sacrifice and presents it unto the Lord, this is going to be the the rules c concerning it. Twelve, if he offer it for thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving, unleavened cakes mingled with oil, and unleavened wafer spread with oil, cakes mingled with oil of fine flour soaked, and it, when he offers it for Thanksgiving, that is tota, and it's it's like the, as an extension of the work in some form. Uh, it, we we see we could bring several offerings, and this would be a separate offering, uh, one made for uh, Thanksgiving, uh, as an extension of that which the Lord has done. Uh, he shall offer it with unleavened cakes. Of course, uh, all these. Are as we'll find out, this is going to be an exception. These cakes are offered unleavened, uh, with the wafers or uh, uh, these cakes that are mingled with oil. These are going to be of the fine flour because uh, that's the dry measure. There's a little bit of judgment in it. The oil is the anointing. Of course, there's the salt of the contract in it as well. Thirteen with cakes of leavened bread, he shall present his offering with the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving. Because these other wafers, these cakes mingled with oil, and these unliving uh, wafers will be offered with these peace offerings, the shalem. That's to keep the peace or for the health, to make keep one safe from their shortcoming, you might say, uh, would be offered with these thanksgiving or uh, as with that extension because the unleavened, with the leaving cakes, these uh, loaves that have leavening in them would be offered as well. We'll find out w one of each of these would be brought unto the Lord because there's going to be a separate separation uh, between your the sin offering, the peace offering, and this offering of thanksgiving. 14. And of it he shall present one out of each offering for a gift unto the Lord. It shall be the priest that dashes the blood of the peace offerings against the altar. And of it shall he present one. One piece of each one of them uh, will find out there's no leavening allowed on the altar. But it shall be the priest that dashes the blood of the peace offerings against the altar. But it's going to be the priest, uh, his portion, that belongs to him, uh, uh, this uh, because the leavening the leavening represents the commands or the extortions of it all 15 and the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving shall be eaten on the day of his offering he shall not leave any of it until the morning so the flesh or that's going to be that portion which the Lord gives him of that peace offering that peace offering being that offering that's offered to keep the peace it's offered to help for the health um, it shall be the priest that dashes the blood he's the one that's got to eat it it's going to be that peace that uh, which is that peace offering that's offered he the one that offers it it's his fifth 16. And nothing's going to be left of it till, until the morning. He has to consume it all 
on that day. Even in that understanding, we'll find out. Uh, that was it's kind of like a responsibility to to uh, get rid of it that day. And if anything's left, we're going to find out. It has to be burnt. Sixteen. But if the sacrifice of his offering be a vow or a free will offering, it shall be eaten on the day that he offers it. That he offers his sacrifice, and on the morrow that which remains of it may be eaten. But if now the sacrifice will make this is a little separation here between the peace offering has to be all uh, consumed th- that day. But the if it's a sacrifice of a vow, that's just simply a promise one makes unto the Lord or uh, even someone else, or a free will offering. A uh, free will offering is the same as a voluntary offering, and the word is netaba. Uh, it's an offering of spontaneity. It's a just something that you do uh, willingly, freely. It um, it could be used for uh, whatever reason. Uh, Anything that remains of that offering, we'll find out, could be eaten on the next day. But that, 17, but that which remains of the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burnt with fire. So all those things uh, of the free will offering could be consumed on the second day. But on the third day, that would finish those understandings. Anything left has to be burnt with fire or consumed. Uh, by the fire. The fire is always a judgment. It's always that which finishes it off. It leaves ashes in its wake. 18. If any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings be it all eaten on the third day, it shall not be accepted. Neither shall he be imputed unto him that offers it. It shall be an abhorred thing, and the soul that eats of it shall bear his iniquity. And like I said, that third day is going to complete that understanding. It's destroyed by fire. Uh, any of that flesh of the peace offering that's left, that's going to, that, that keeps the peace. Uh, any, anything that's eaten on the third day or consumed on that day, it's not going to be acceptable. It's not accepted. It actually is going to be abhorred, hated. It shall not be pleasing at all. It shall be as a nasty, disgusting thing. And the soul that eats it shall bear his iniquity, or the one that takes part in it is going to bear his iniquity. Um, and pretty much because it's... Um, uh, the ex- the ex- one knows and has seen the perversions of someone else and has offered this to keep the peace because of just they haven't come to the realization, as we'll find out, it's not our business to go around judging people and telling them other shortcomings. That business is wrong to the Lord, and we'll find out. Uh, when all come to one understanding, we'll find out that's a great and, and wonderful day. But everyone needs to come to that under their own uh, resolves. Or you know, It's just not going to happen. But anyway, to take part in that uh, ignorance or to keep it continuing, and we're going to see is just a perversion, and that's how you find out if you're bearing this iniquity. You, you continue uh, in that understanding. That's that's the peace offering we might find uh, was offered for nineteen, and the flesh that touches any unclean thing shall not be eaten; shall be burnt with fire. And as for the flesh, every one that is Clean may eat thereof. And the flesh that touches any unclean thing. So if it touches something that's nasty, putrefying, diseased, you can't partake of it. You can't eat it. It shall be burnt with fire. you got to destroy it, uh, reduce it to ashes, you might say. And as for the flesh, everyone that's clean may eat thereof. But as far as for the uh, that which is the meat, uh, we'll find out anybody that was clean could partake of of those things. But that which was unclean and any portion it touches, it had to be destroyed. 20. But the soul that eats of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings that pertain unto the Lord, having his uncleanliness upon him, 
that soul should be cut off from his people. But the soul that eats of the flesh of the sacrifice. So if you're unclean, in a state of uncleanliness, you can't eat uh, these, any of the things, any of the offerings that come from the altar. Uh, of course, we'll find out these, uh, you could get, if you was just clean and one of the priests, you could get a part of the portions. If you was a relative, you could get part of the portions of another who had done the work. But um, you couldn't eat of any of it if you was unclean. To be unclean is to mean you have, you are in a state of, of um, redemption or being redeemed. One is unclean. He is, he is slightly outside and is waiting to come back in, you might say. Uh, but if you eat of it being unclean, you're like you're outside and you're not coming back in. That's what it is to be. That soul should be cut off from his people. Uh, to be cut off is just to be rejected. Uh, as for the total error, one must still make restitution and redemption. Uh, or to, to clean yourself again. 21. And when anyone shall touch any unclean thing, whether it be the uncleanliness of man, or an unclean beast, or any unclean detestable thing, and eat of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which pertain unto the Lord, that, shall, that soul shall be cut off from his people. And when anyone shall touch, that's just to touch it, you ain't got to eat it, any unclean thing, whether it's uncleanliness of man, you know, they're filthy as well as the unclean beast, that, that which is filthy as well, or the unclean detestable things. Yeah. Detestable is just to be in abhorrence. Uh, uh, you get that uh, um, feeling of getting sick with it. It's to eat the, uh, and eat of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings. So if you're filthy and you eat, of course, this only pertains to the priest, or partake of, help consume that which come from uh, these offerings that are brought before the Lord, that soul shall be cut off from his people, uh, being unclean, and having partook of those things that come from the altar. 22. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, so we're going to change paragraphs. As we'll see, we're no longer going to be speaking to the Levites or those that are the priests, I should say, those that stand before the Lord. We're going to be speaking to the children of Israel. Slightly different ordinances. Sometimes uh, the priests have to do things. Uh, the common man doesn't. Uh, the, and the common man's going to have to do things. The priest doesn't. 23, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, You shall eat no fat of ox or sheep or goat. Now, to the children, that's all those that come from Israel, those that contend with the Mighty One. Uh, there's no big secret. Those that face everyday adversity of life, it's everybody. Nobody's exempt. You shall eat no fat. That fat's going to be simply all that fat good part that come from off the animal, off these beasts, of the ox or the sheep or the goat. Uh, the ox is just going to be of the greater herds. These that are caused to pull, these are caused to plow in a sense, and these sheep or the goat are the ones that are led easily. And uh, even the, the ones I use as a substitute or, uh, is the goat. 24, and the fat of that which dies of itself, and the fat of that which is torn of beast may be used for any other service, but you shall no wise eat of it. The fat that dies of itself, uh, any animal uh, that is found dead, uh, or the, uh, this animal that is found that's been ripped apart by some other animal, killed by an animal, you can use the, uh, this fat for any other purpose, uh, like greasing the axles or something of such purpose, but you shall no wise eat of it. That would be disgusting. 25. For whosoever eats the fat of the beast, of of which men present an offering made by fire unto the Lord, even the soul that eats of it shall be cut off from his people. 
and anybody that eats the fat of the beast, that's those animals that was presented as an offering made by fire or the judgment unto the Lord, we'll find out all the all the fat uh, goes to, unto the Lord. Well, you need to trim that off. Even the soul that eats of it shall be cut from his people. And just like with the, with the Levites, uh, being cut off because they was unclean. The, the, this is for the common man. He's cut off if he eats the fat or the blood, we'll find out. 26. You shall eat no manner of blood, whether it be a fowl or beast, any of, any of your dwellings. You shall eat no manner of blood. Uh, that's blood or nothing of, of that sort. Of course, that stands for the life within or that's what the Lord give you in mercy. It all goes back to the beginning, my friends. In the day the Lord put you here, uh, when he created this flesh body for you to live in, and the fact that it's all about mercy in the beginning, it doesn't matter. The, uh, the, the whole thing here is that you shouldn't eat the blood and the Lord don't want you eating the fat as well uh, of of the fowl. Of course, those are those things that fly around, uh, they have the ability to fly. Well, of course, uh, don't seem so amazing. Uh, but when we find see that they're going about in the heavens or flying around in the understandings uh, or the beast, and that's those that that. Uh, of used for any purpose they're not humans uh, we might say they're, they are the other beasts of the earth in any of your dwellings no matter where you're at no blood no fat 27 whosoever it be that eats any blood that soul shall be cut off from his people and whosoever does eat any blood or partake of that We'll find now they're going to be cut off from his people. I know a lot of people, they don't like this. Uh, we're going to have to separate ourselves from the animals a little bit. Uh, I mean, the animals, they don't care. They'll eat the raw flesh. But the Lord said, you ain't going to do that. Uh, why? Well, you're the one that said you're not the animal. Uh, you claim to be, uh, you want to be a, a, a beast or do you want to be a man? 28 and the Lord spoke unto Moses saying so once again Hashem spoke unto Moses this one who was drawn out and continued in his speech we'll find out 29 speak unto the children of Israel saying he that offers a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord shall bring his offering unto the Lord out of a sacrifice of peace offerings so unto the children of Israel that's all those that contend with the mighty one those that come from Israel uh, you know, the, like I said, you face every day's life's adversity, uh, wrestling with it, you might say. He that offers a sacrifice of peace offerings, uh, the Shilam, unto the Lord, uh, shall bring his offering unto the Lord out of his sacrifice of peace offerings. That portion uh, of the peace offering shall come out of the sacrifice or that which is going to make atonement for your shortcomings. 30. His own hands shall bring the offerings of the Lord made by fire. The fat with the breast shall he bring, that the breast may be waved for a wave offering before the Lord. So his own hands, he's going to be the one that does it. Uh, he's going to bring these offerings up before the Lord that are going to be made by fire. As, fine, as we'll find, then the priest will present them. The fat with the breast shall he bring. Uh, the, uh, the breast is that foremost part, or that part that's up front. It may be the choicest portion of it. The, that the breast may be waved before a wave offering. A wave offering is a ten nufa. It is something that it means to brandish it, make it known, uh, show it, uh, present it, um, uh, make it known before the Lord. As we'll find out. Uh, Thirty-one, and the priest shall make the fat smoke upon the altar, but the priest, but the breast shall be Aaron and his sons, and the priest shall make the fat smoke upon the altar. So that's his job. He's to make turn it into a pleasant odor unto the Lord. Uh, it kind of makes sense out of the whole thing, you might say. Give a little understanding this way, give a little understanding the other way, and everybody walks away happy.
at the breast. That's the choice part. That's that part up front. Well, of course, that belongs to Aaron and his sons. The Lord gave it to him in the beginning. And that's where we're at. Uh, right here in this beginning, uh, where the Lord is, is, is portioning out these portions unto Aaron and his sons. Aaron's the light bringer. He's the one that will find out where the anointing's burning. It's up to him to keep the task going. And his sons, that's those masculines that come forth to carry on the Shem. That's our own. 32. And the right thigh shall you give unto the priest for a heave offering out of your sacrifices of peace offerings. And the right thigh will find out as well. Right thigh, the right is a means it's the strong or the great strength. Uh, the thigh we're going to find out as a portion, uh, not the shoulder, not the front shoulder, but the rear thigh. Uh, that's because that's the strength, the, the portion of the leg. Kind of what you go on, and and uh, that's that's what it's that's what it's going to represent. That part's going to belong to the priest. That's those that stand before the Lord do these this work, make this atonement. Uh, it's for a heave offering. A heave offering is a ter u ma, and it, it means to be raised up, uh, to be lifted up, and it means actually to be presented and given unto the Lord. In a sense that that's their portion. The Lord gave that to them. Uh, it's to be lifted up before the Lord in a show of of thanks. Uh, for these peace offerings that was given, that, uh, as we'll find out, the Lord bringing everybody to their knowledge and understanding. 33. He among the sons of Aaron that offer the blood of the peace offerings and the fat shall have the right thigh for a portion. And the, he among the sons of Aaron, the one that does the deed, you might say, that does the offering, uh, that makes, that offers the blood of the peace offerings and the fat shall have that right thigh for a portion. It's going to be his. It's given to him. He's going to have that uh, great strength, even uh, that portion of that offering that was given. 34. For the, for the breast of waving and the thigh of heaving have I taken of the children of Israel out of their sacrifices of peace offerings and given unto them and given them unto Aaron the priest and his sons as a do forever from the children of Israel. For the breast of waving, that's that foremost, that's that up front part we'll find out the Lord gave everybody in the beginning of waving, uh, making that known. It was the law. It represents all that. And the thigh of heaving and that great strength that which it goes on is for a heaving or a, a presentation even that's, that's given. We'll find out it's given to Aaron, the priest, and his sons as a do. So Aaron, that's the light bringer, and the priest, the one that stands before the Lord, uh, will find out make an atonement with his sons, those the masculines that come forth to carry on uh, the Shem. It's a do, and this do is more than just like a pay. It's, it's more like a statute. It's an ordinance. It's a task to be done. It's a law. It's an instruction. It's something you have to do. And, and it's from the children of Israel. It's all those that contend all the mighty with the mighty one. It's something they give them to do. 35. This is the consecrated portion of our own and the consecrated portion of his sons out of the offerings of the Lord made by fire in the day when they were presented to minister unto the Lord in the priest's office. This is the consecrated portion. Consecrated portion, it's set aside. It's uh, milo. Uh, it means to fulfill. It was dedicated. It was given to them. Uh, it's set aside for them. It's their portion. Our own, his sons. It comes out of the offerings of the Lord, that which is presented to the Lord. They get theirs from them, him. As we'll see, it was, it's, it was their business. These, these offerings are made by fire. That's in the judgments of the Lord. So when they, we find out all oh, this was brought down to the priest and they would straighten the whole matter out in the day, in that understanding, when they were presented to minister, that was their job in the day. Even when they was presented to minister to do the work of the Lord in the priest's office, 
those that would represent and those that were instructed on how to, uh, you might say, straighten the whole matter out. 36, which the Lord commanded to be given them of the children of Israel on the day that they were anointed. It is a due forever throughout their generation. Which the Lord commanded to be given them. Uh, it's It was their portion, you might say. It was what the Lord said you will give them. This is their portion uh, to all these children of Israel. That's everybody. Um, if you don't face every life's everyday adversities, my friend, you would, shit, you are excluded in the day uh, when they were anointed. So when the Lord anointed uh, Aaron and his sons as the priest, this was going to be their portion forever throughout their generation. Ain't nothing ever going to change about that. It's going to be a law. It's an ordinance. It's a statute. Once it's established, it's like well, as long as the sun comes up, you got to do it. Doesn't matter if anything else gets done. This is going to have to be done. 37. This is the law of the burnt offering, of the meal offering, of the sin offering, and of the guilt offering, and of the consecration offering, and of the sacrifice of peace offerings. Now, this is the law. It's a, instructions. It's the statutes. It's the ordinance. It's, it's what has to be done. It's of the same as the law, burnt offering, the ola, as as the meal offering, the minka, uh, as the sin offering, the kata'a, as the guilt offering, uh, the arsham, and of the consecration offering, of course, that is the milo, and the sacrifice of these peace offerings, that's the shalom. 38, which the Lord commanded Moses in Mount Sinai, or Sinai, in the day that he commanded the children of Israel to present their offerings unto the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. So, we, this is what the Lord commanded Moses, the one that was drawn out, who, the one the Lord had saved in Mount Sin Sinai, or Sinai. The, that's the high place of the thorns. That's, we're going to stand for it. It stands for all the other nations and these things that they have done. It's even in that understanding which was commanded to the children of Israel. That's all those that contend with the mighty ones. Uh, to present their offerings unto the Lord. This is, was the rules and the instructions. Even in the wilderness, that's the place where the words were driving out uh, in Mount Sinai. Of course, you know, uh, the truth sooner or later comes out, my friends. And just like a wilderness, uh, a place of thorns, uh, we're going to turn it into a garden. We're going to move forward. Leviticus chapter 8. Turn and return. 